Squad Countdown, and this evening I have the pleasure to be joined by the one and only Willie Norton, lead singer from Neon Fly. It is great to be chatting to you. Good and to be chatting up to you after you. all these years. It's been a while since yeah. I saw you guys live. Um, you've just released Venus with Danny Devine. How did that come about, and how pleased are you with the reaction so far? <laughs> We are immensely pleased, answering your second question first, immensely pleased with the reaction. It's doing really, really well. So, you know, fingers crossed it's going to do, uh, keep doing well. Uh, it's our first release since the first teaser single off the album, which was called This World Is Burning. That was about a year ago, pre-pandemic. Um, but uh, so we're back in now with this. And, and the idea basically came from Freddie Thunder, who's my songwriting partner. He's the leader of the band, Freddie Thunder, who you may or may not have, uh, I think you might have spoken to him before. Sorry, and too basically we 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 crowdfunded the latest album the latest album's called the future tonight i'll try and keep it short it's called the future tonight it's coming out in june june the 18th and basically we crowdfunded it it's the first time we've ever crowdfunded anything and we part of our crowdfund was we needed to sell a whole load of acoustic tracks basically a lot of people said i'd like you to sing this willie willie sings that acoustically willie sings this so i did fear of the dark i did alone by heart i did unchained melody I did like 12 13 14 songs now one of the songs that was chosen was venus one of our big fans uh, um who shall remain nameless um chose venus and we'd done this whole run of these acoustic tracks which went pretty well and then we had this one track left and freddie had this flash of just inspiration he went hang on a minute we've done the acoustic thing let's just turn the amps back on let's do a rock and roll track venus will be fun and he went Danny, Danny is a friend of the band, friend of Fred's, and uh, he went, she could be Venus. She's Venus. We know Venus. So we've got the track Venus, turn the amps on, and we have a Venus. So um, he wrote the script. Uh, we've got a great crew, came down, shot it in North London. Boom. There it is. And it's her first vocal performance. She's obviously all over the place. You know, she's a big sort of Instagram presence. But she, uh, she, she, well, she doesn't sing on the track, but she speaks, and she brings the character of Venus to life. I think pretty yeah, yeah, man, it's really good. It's a good video. Good. It's eye catching and everything. It does yeah. what it says on the tin, man. Yes, okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. We've done a few cover versions acoustically. Have you thought of anything like by Skid Row, sort of Cinderella, something like that? Well, we 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 were, we played what we were given. You know, we could so we had no sort of input on it. They basically just went the the fans went. We'd like you to do these. So there were some really unusual choices. That was Frank Zappa. Yeah. You know, which is great. Marillion, which is great. I mean, I'm a prog fan, so that's cool. But there wasn't any really, there was a lot of prog metal. There was there some Threshold in there. And, you know, and there was some Ed Guy, sort of power metal, but, and Maiden. But there wasn't any hair metal. Um, I've been known to do a few hair metal covers in my time. Um, uh, but uh, no, there wasn't anything like that. But we, we have done, funny, if we talk about Freedom Call, we, we were on one Freedom Call's records on, on one of their... Um, bonus discs they are we they are still bands who supported them to do to do covers and we did land of light which is up on spotify and that's i, th I think we do a good cover <laughs> I, know, I think we do i mean i don't want to i don't want to sound immodest but i think we do give good cover so cool. check it out land of light on spotify i think it's rather good so check that. definitely check, it out. Yeah. check that out definitely so yeah. you're going to be releasing the album in june um cool. can we expect any other cover versions before then and when the album comes out, what can we expect from this masterpiece? This masterpiece. Um, so um, you can expect no more cover versions. Some of you might be relieved to know. So everything from now on is going to be written by us. And um, we spent several years writing it. Our last album was 2014. So it's been a long period. We've had some lineup changes. We've had management change. We have label changes. The world has gone to hell in a handcart, as you all know, because of COVID. So that's knocked a year off everything. But we spent a lot of time just writing it. I mean, and it's been a real sort of long process of getting the right producer, getting the right group of songs together. We're not like a band that have demos 40 songs. We write the songs we want to write and we actually demo the whole album. So we will record the album, demo it, go, this is this, this is right, this is wrong. And then we then record it all again. So... I mean, we're very meticulous. That's why it takes us so long. And also been touring a lot. You know, we, we, toured, up, we toured ourselves to death up until about 2015, 2016. It was, you know, we, we, we really put a lot of time and heart into the first two albums. You know, we, I don't know. There's anybody we didn't support. I don't know. We did a lot, you know. Uh, so, so we just took our time, really. And we needed to find a new drummer, which was a big deal for us. You right. know, we found a brilliant new drummer called Dick Brown. Dick Radical, as we call him. 
and because he had big shoes to fill because our previous drummer Boris Legal um he's now with the back orchestra train the martyrs and he's played with chip spanner and you know he's on that whole gent scene so he went off into the distance amicably um i hasten to add and we just needed to find somebody who could recreate his parts which are extremely technical he's a very very gifted drummer and bring something new and uh, we found deck and he can do both of those things so that that's part of the reason uh, was that the question <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, I know. Answer. that's an answer <laughs> <laughs> it's good okay so obviously boris yesterday announced some hopefully lessening of the covid restrictions are you hopeful to get out on the road i mean you must be absolutely fucking itching to get back out there yeah i am itching to get back out there but i mean i want people i also want people to be safe you know i mean i've been doing this all my life and you've been getting to gigs all your life right and I've yeah made, maybe you've done music yourself i don't know Seth, but you know so Backstage areas, even at big festivals and big shows, we've been very fortunate to do some very big shows and, and to do some smaller shows. They are much of a muchness. They're full of people. There's full of pe people out front. Um, there's tech crews and everything. And it's it's a very, very um, densely populated environment, obviously, for the audience mostly. And, you know, I just want to make sure people are comfortable, you know. So, yeah, I want to get out there. We've got a big festival uh, booked for summer this year, which is put off from last year in Czech Republic, which is one of the big shows we do. So we're more main staging at that Masters of Rock, which is a big show. We were supposed to be with Priest. You can imagine our hearts broke. Priest were headlining. and Oh, my God. We were like, oh, here we go. And then the pandemic struck. So it's the same lineup, I believe. But whether it will happen or not, I don't know. But I just think we've just got to take it one step at a time, you know, yeah. because I, I crowd surf. I mean, I don't know. I When I go up on stage, I mean, for a festival show, I sometimes I... The mood takes me, I'm out there, I'm down at the front. You know, and people, I'm aware that people don't necessarily want that proximity. You know, they're concerned about the people standing next to them, and then they see me, you know, old beardy bollocks coming down. You know, they think, where's he been? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I, I, so I think when, when the time is right, I think everybody will come back. But I would say, don't, I don't want us to, anyone to rush it and then people to get sick. Sorry if that sounds a bit, you know. No, no. Yeah, right. I mean, I can't see myself even visiting the pub until things are better again because I just not going to be the same atmosphere, let mm -hmm. alone go to a restaurant or a festival. I, I just can't imagine what it will be like until yeah. things are on some sort of normal level. So, yeah. It's, and I it's, think also, it's also how, how can festivals and, and promoters make any money exactly. um, as a business? You know, I mean, I hate to tell people, but, you know, rock and roll is a business unfortunately yeah. it's supposed to make money and that's why it exists really and promoters won't put on shows if there's only going to be you know if there's if there's a third or a quarter of the people there it, it, it doesn't pay for the stages it doesn't pay for the bands it doesn't pay for the headliners who will expect to be and stuff so it doesn't pay for the equipment so it's very difficult it you know? is man well let's just hope something does start to turn a corner but if not obviously yeah. you're the talking album release do you plan to do like a live stream? Would that be something you thought? Yeah, it's been mooted. Yeah, it has been mooted. Uh, you know, we have we have spoken about them. There's some really, really good outlets to do that. You've maybe checked. I've got a pal in another in another band, quite a well-known band, who should remain named. So they, they've recently debuted an album and did a really cool live stream. And, uh, you know, I thought, that, yeah, that's a good idea. But again, I don't know. I, it, is it, is it, you know... It won't be honed. It won't. We won't have rode, you know, get hit the road with these songs. We'll be hitting it pretty cold. And I want to give people the best possible indication of the quality of the material. I want to go out and do a cracking show. It's really hard to do that in front of a bank of monitors and cameras. Well, I can do it. I've done it before, but you know. But I, I'm. I think wait and see. It's again. It's another wait and see. We are debating that. Is the honest answer. But I, there's no firm decision on that. We okay. might do we might we might do a launch party like that, but we'll see. Okay. You know. So if I'd been on another planet, I've never heard of Neon Flight, which two yeah. tracks then would you play me from your repertoire to introduce me to you? Jesus, that is a really tough question. Well, Gift to Remember from my first album is a hugely popular song. It's a sort of um uh 
it has slight AOR qualities. It's sort of it's a, the rockier end of metal, and pa- dare I say the popular end of metal. Big choruses, banked up choruses, high harmonies, sort of an eighty style, but a bit of a seventy style, and very very melodic. So melodic, you just got to take a bath after it because you just got to wash the melodies off you because you're just covered in melody, covered in sweet top notes. Blushing slightly. A, a gift to remember would be one I would say that sort of gives a fair indication of us. And well, I mean, we're trying to turn a bit of a corner with this new album this is the third album we've done i can't believe we've done three plus an ep so we've we've you know we've been around uh weirdly i always think of us as a new band but i guess i suppose we're not um but i without i don't want to sort of drop any clangers but i would love people to check out the new album because i think they're going to be surprised and i know every band says that right they say oh wait to but we've really made a conscious effort to bring our sound probably lose some of the more historic elements to it be it bring it much more up to date make it much more contemporary um and so the sound and the songwriting is just a little bit more formatted to a more contemporary type idiom and i think uh i think hopefully people will listen to it and go oh okay they do that i mean they might go oh they do that but we wish they were doing this that's fine too but uh i can't tell you any of the names of the songs because i get killed by the record label but um but there's stuff there's loads there's some stuff there's some great singles coming out off it which i've got a lot of faith in and the the old stuff's great i love it and i love what we've done but the the new stuff is a rock band uh, a, a a heavy rock band with metal overtones we've been tarred with the beautiful brush of power metal in the past even yeah. when we release stuff that's not power metal and we're just not i'm not a power metal singer i don't know where it comes from you know, it's, I, I like I like power, power metal, but I'm, I don't feel I'm in a power metal band. But it, it, if this third album doesn't dispel that myth of Neon Fly being a power metal band, next album I'm just gonna it's gonna be me and a set of bongos. I'm just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna get rid of the guitars, you know. So yeah, so give to remember from back in the day. That's this very unfair question, by the way. And then check out the new album, The Future Tonight, to see cool. where, where we're at. You know. Cool. Well, actually, selling some conga drums. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So, next one. It's always going back to COVID a little bit, but it's a good question. Yeah, sure. If yeah. you're stuck in quarantine for a year, which musician, dead or alive, would you have with you? Fuck, that's, that's a beauty. That's an absolute beauty. Okay. Well, the answer to that would be. The answer to that would be. Uh, it would be Geddy Lee to tell me how he does that, <laughs> that thing that he does. Yeah. Um, well, I play a bit of bass. It's a joke in the band, but I do play bass. Uh, and I've played bass in bands in the past, so, uh, but, you know, not professionally now, I'm a singer. Uh, but I, I, I grew up on a lot of that stuff, so I'd like to have a conversation with him. And also, I know he appreciates a fine wine, so that would be good fun. Um, and also, from a vocal point of view, it's really difficult. There's, like, there's lots of singers I would like to spend time with and just go, how are you doing that? And why are you doing that? Uh, uh, who would I go with? I would go with, I think probably, I'd probably sit down with Bruce. I met Bruce once, some years ago. I'm, I'm sure you probably did as well, I, I'm sure. But I, I, I met him once and he is uh, he's a very nice person, but he has a very particular way of singing and a very, he's a very disciplined approach to singing. And he is a power metal singer. He is the power metal singer. So I'd like to sit down with him and say, look, if I was in a power metal band, which I'm not, how would I, you know, so somebody like that. Oh, yeah, Bruce for that. Bruce for those, for, for technique. And uh, Jazz Coleman from Killing Joke for anger. I'm a big oh, fan. I love a bit of Killing Joke. For how do you, uh, you know, how do you, how do you stay so committed for so long? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it's totally, pretty, man. Absolutely. Yeah. That's all. Cool. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so going back to your youth, when you first got on stage, can you remember the first ever gig and how you felt? And what was the first song you ever sung? Yeah, I do remember it. <laughs> I think it was Sunday Bloody Sunday. It's definitely a U two song. I think it was something because I'm Irish, as you may or may not know. But it's it's it was either so when it was part of the thing of growing up, you had to U two it was, was on your passport, so it was. Uh, you know it's part of the culture so it still is so it was either sunday bloody sunday or it could have been where the streets of no name wow <laughs> cool. that is a great question but yeah so it wouldn't be something like that um i know exactly where the first gig was actually it's the, the pub is still there 
And I think I might have, I think I have photographs from it. So maybe one day I'll post those. I think I do. I think I've got a photograph. Yeah. So it was messy. I think I was playing bass as well, actually. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, but yeah, so it was you. It was you too. There you go. I wish I could say Megadeth. I wish I could say Maiden, but it wasn't. It was you too. <laughs> okay. And so what would you like yourself to be remembered for in 50 years time? Uh, I would like to, great question. I would like to be remembered for, without sounding immodest, if anybody could be bothered to remember me, um, for being entertaining, for bringing some happiness coming on stage and people coming away with great memories, people being brought together, people having positive associations with what I do on stage. Mm -hmm. If people meet me off stage also, similarly, just uh, as a good egg. Um, But from a musical perspective, yeah, I just... um, People gain pleasure from it. It's as simple as that. And laughter. I can't find it very difficult to take rock and roll seriously sometimes, as you might have noticed from some of my performances. But, I, you know, I think humour is a necessary part of metal. You it's know. it's got to be fun, hasn't it? It's got to be. Do yeah. you know what I mean? That's, that's got to be, dude. Absolutely, yeah. man. <laughs> and and I, there's darkness and there's light, you know, and we tend towards the light with our sort of stuff. And I know there's a lot of virtue and more darker music, absolutely. But temperament. Yeah. I, that's not that's not my bag you know so yeah. i tend to veer towards a more positive um or what i think is a positive uh, approach so hopefully people remember that and go oh yeah i remember him he was all right he was funny <laughs> if he remembers a good song <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome <laughs> so obviously you've done shit loads of touring um did you find and have you found that you've had better audiences and bigger audiences in europe when you've done like your own shows rather than in the UK? Um, it depends who you go out, out with. Um, but generally, yes, is the answer. A uh, generally, yes. I think that's if we've been out, um, well, we've done UK and then European legs with bands and the difference is, is huge. And also the way that, the way that the musicians are treated, I find it's really different on the continent. I just find that people just take it a little bit more. And I'm not being, you know, I'm not being disrespectful of venues over here. I know how hard it is to, to run venues. I've been involved in that myself in a small way. And, you know, I get that. It's just that I think it, the venues in the UK are so well trodden, you know, that they just got to get you in and get you out. And I've been with headliners where venues have literally said, you need to go now because we've got a club night on. And this would be people who'd sold the venue out. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty cut. You know what I mean? I do. I've seen so, a few times. Get like, that what? green room. It's like, well, hang on a minute. I just don't just have a thousand people in here. It's like, and I know, mate, there's this going now. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand it because it's an it's 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 yeah. it's the uh, it's economics. But in Europe, it tends to be there's still a gig going culture, and um, uh, a lot more, I think, particularly particularly for dare I say for younger people. Um, yeah. You know, people will go to a local venue. They'll say, oh, da da da's on, and they will be there. I'm not talking about arenas. That, that's a different level. Yeah. I took, uh, you know, rock clubs, you know, thousand, mm. thousand or a thousand plus or eight hundred to a thousand, those sorts of size venues. People will go to them because they go, oh, you've come to our town and they'll, you know, they'll check you out. Um, exactly. Different in the UK. It's a very saturated market. That's the other thing. It's really yeah. saturated, hugely yeah. competitive, you know. Totally, man. Totally. I'm a big fan of going to Belgium, um, Holland for gigs. Totally yeah. different. And the beer is better as well. So what can you say? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the next one then. Can you give me four words to describe Neon Fly? Uh, energetic. Uh, songs. We do songs. Uh, irrepressible. Uh, determined. <laughs> absolutely mate because it's been a while since the last album but you're still going strong so that's brilliant <laughs> we haven't given up yet i don't think we'll ever give up well that's sorry good. everyone we're never gonna that's, give up that's good to know all right then so this is just for fun then this is like a quick fire round five questions yeah so really i should have done the interview when you just before you're going to release the album or when i've listened to the album or anyway but it's all good it's all good get another there. one this is, we'll do another one. We will, man. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so this is a quick fire round. First one, festival or small intimate gig? Festival. Beer or pizza? Did you say beer or pizza? Yeah. Or beer? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously beer. 
This is just for fun. <laughs> Iron Maiden or Judas Priest? Oh, that's really difficult. But if you'd asked me that uh, ten years ago, I'd say Iron Maiden. If you asked me that today, I'd say Judas Priest. So I'm going to go. I'm going to say Iron Priest. Good answer. That's a good answer. Vinyl or digital? Love vinyl. Okay, another good answer. Right, last one. Really important. Boris Johnson or Kermit the Frog? Um, both are fucking irritating. Uh, so, uh, do do I need to answer that? They can both fuck off. <laughs> Fair enough. I want to thank you so much for your time, and like again, congratulate you on the Danny Divine. Sorry, the video of Venus with Danny Divine. But I mean, thank Danny you. Divine makes it, of course, with the song and the cover. <laughs> what that... was the photograph of me? What was the photograph of me on the cover? I'm the fucking believable. <laughs> anyway, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, do you have any final words for your fans and our viewers and listeners? Yeah, um, final words are stay well, stay healthy. Uh, look forward to seeing you on the road in 2021, latterly or 2022. Check out the future tonight, June the 18th, I believe it is. June sometime, the future tonight is when it releases. Check it out and check out Venus on YouTube or Spotify if you want to just listen to the track. It's fucking banging. <laughs> <laughs>